What do you think? You want it this week? You want to run that? At, oh. Do that intro? I don't, I don't know what intro I should do. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday show on the line. I'm Matt Delaney. This week, I'm joined, as almost always, uh, by Jimmy Snow. As a matter of fact, I've made it so that it rhymes when I put up my uh, tweet about the toe. It's in the show. It's it's time for the Sunday show with Jimmy Snow and me. Not bad. So, Not bad, but I'll see if I can get uh, ChatGPT to work on it. Yes, I'm sure ChatGPT could do it in the style of Shakespeare and make it make it flow. Yeah, the 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 Sunday show can flow with Jimmy Snow. It's time to see if ChatGPT can make us see a sonnet. There we go. That could be. Well, somewhere there there's a haiku that's just terrible. Um, So yesterday we did. We did a show, uh, like I did a debate in the morning, drove drove all the way to Dallas, did a debate, drove all the way back, uh, did a show. It was a uh, a robust, awesome show, and mm-hmm. yet there were people yesterday who were like, oh, no, Matt and Jimmy are fighting. It's going to be a thin. No, it's the fact that, uh, first of all, I never require anybody to, to agree with me on everything. But also, lately, I've been coming under fire for this video that I put out. Uh, about claims not being evidence. And I haven't seen some of the responses, but evidently, I, I, I think Catholic apologist Trent Horn um, put together like a blog post and maybe a video. Uh, I think I saw somebody link something. So I'm going to, when I get time, I'm going to check it out, but it won't be this week because I, I get to eat my last meal tonight. At We we keep calling it my last meal. Johnny was here and, and was laughing. He was like, oh, so this is going to be your last meal. Yeah, by 10 o'clock tonight, I have to stop eating because Tuesday morning at the crack of dawn, I'm going to get my crack explored uh, with a colonoscopy. And where will you be live streaming that? Uh, I'm going <laughs> to, they'd say I can't take my phone in, so I can't live stream it. And I don't know that I, I imagine I won't be too conscious for it. Bummer. Uh, Rhett and Link managed to be allowed to live stream their vasectomies. Maybe it just takes some pre-planning. You got to coordinate with the hospitals. I don't know. Something. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I, well, I hadn't checked. I, I wasn't able to live stream my heart surgery. So I'm I'm just assuming that we don't need to live stream me getting a camera shoved up my butt. But you never know. There is there is a market for everything, my friend. That's that's, that's true. Yeah. I'll be streaming it at OnlyFans. That's right. So. This is the Sunday show right here on the line. And while Jimmy and I are the ones that are here, are here almost every week, there are exceptions um, and we, there will be changes uh, from time to time as, you know, because Jimmy needs some fucking time off. I mean, that's just the truth. Yeah, and eventually. I will be doing whatever I can to, to help him get time off. Um, but what, what are we doing? We're doing calls on a call-in show on a network called The Line, which was viciously hacked and mauled and... Jimmy had to jump through all the hoops to get us back online, but we are back and yeah. we've been back since Wednesday. Um, and we're excited because while I would say that the Muslim apologists that I have been engaging with debates with are clearly at a noticeably lower tier than the Christian apologists I frequently debate, uh, despite the fact that none of them have you know good arguments and evidence for their beliefs in my view this thing has popped up about claims aren't evidence claims aren't evidence and the next time somebody by the way if you're calling in to tell me that claims are in fact evidence um i'll be able to you know to to provide evidence against that really quickly but we're here because we would like to know we want to have the conversations we want to have the arguments if you're a sincere believer in any of the things that jimmy and i don't believe in um you know, gods, ghosts. I don't. Know, it's, I need another G word. That gods, ghosts, and gazorpazorp. Gazorpazorp. Yeah. Then, by all means, call in, please. Let's make this as easy as possible. I'm going to make yeah. judicious use of the mute button so that we're not trying to talk over the callers. The callers aren't trying to talk over us. But if you're asked a question, try to make sure you answer that question and not some other question. Uh, or not try to get your sermon in. You will get to speak much more, um, and you'll get a lot more airtime to make your point, and we'll have a lot more clarity and better arguments. Oh, there we go. Goblins, gremlins, ghouls. Uh, yeah. Y'all are well, on it. Guns and gold, but, man, chat's awesome. Gigfoot. 
Um, I'm there. I'm there with that. Are Matt's debates on this channel? No, my debates are on whatever channel those debates uh, are on, and then I link to them from my Patreon. But there will, in fact, be debates on this channel, yeah. uh, both full-on uh, debates in more of a when they happen in a cause I want to type of format, but there's a number of other things coming down the pipe we're putting together, or I should say Jimmy and some other people are putting it together because I don't do anything. I show up and talk when there's a show and offer some input behind the scenes. Uh, Stan wants to see Jimmy and Matt fight about AI again. That's not going to happen today. Um, if you wanted to see it thing. again, it's easy. You, it's on, yeah. it's on demand. You can just go watch it in, as many times in a row as you like. We recorded the whole thing. You can see the moment at which I got irritated as fuck, and you can see yeah. when it all passed over. And it's it's fine. It, it's <laughs> funny to me that, like, for example, yesterday um, when I was up at DebateCon 3, which was weird. For those of you who didn't tune into yesterday's show, I'll talk more about it in the debate review. But um, Arn and T-Jump debated whether or not religion does more harm than good, which is a debate that I think should have completely been reworded and reworked. Not the fault of either one of them. I'm not faulting them for that. But... When you say religion, you're speaking in a broad sense. And so, you know, when when, when your thing is, uh, does religion do more harm than good? And you have religions like secular humanism or Satanism or whatever it is, T-Jump's made up, um, versus Christianity and Islam and Scientology. That's a broad spectrum. And some of them may have done more harm than good. And some of them may have done more good than harm. And some of them... Um, may be roughly neutral and so what's the aggregate well do you do it based on the the total population because there's going to be way more christians and muslims than there are uh satanists and and scientologists and and whatever else so it, it, that was a little bit of a mess i then debated uh, a young man on whether or not islam is true um i i don't think that went particularly well for him and one of the ways you can tell i don't i don't judge debates by win or lose other people can they can think what they want um, there are people who aren't going to change their mind. There are people who are going to think I'm I'm nuts and an asshole no matter what. But the fact of the matter is that when people lined up for the q and I think there were one or two questions that were directed at me, and one of them was just out of pity for the fact that I looked bored. Well, one of them was Matt looked bored, so I wanted to ask him a question. And the other one was a question she originally had for Hussein but reworked for me because nobody was directing questions at me. And when that happens... It's not that you're just in a room that is hostile to your views. It means that you did not do well enough if all of the questions, it means you, there were so many holes in what you were say, saying or spewing uh, as the earth spews forth its treasures, saith the Quran. If there were so many holes in what you were spewing that I didn't have time to go through them all in the actual debate and people had to line up, you know, halfway down the block uh, just to do it. But the, the more disappointing thing to me, and, and I, I'm, not, I'm not knocking modern-day debates over this, even though it is their fault that this happened. Um, the last two debates of the day were, uh, one of them was a Muslim defending child marriage, or assert, and, and just asserting all kinds of terrible things. Um, and it's the same Muslim that I'm going to end up debating at the next debate con. And then the last one, which I didn't get to watch at all, um, was uh, with, with um, David Wood and Kenny Ballmer talking about whether or not Muhammad's marriage to Aisha was moral or permissible or whatever else. And I haven't seen it, so I don't know what the arguments are, and I can't, I can't qualify or I can't uh, comment on it. But I will say that um, the guys who were there. I, I get along fine with serious apologists, whether they're Christian or Muslim or whatever else. It's the ones that that show up who watched a video on 10 questions atheists can't answer and haven't spent any time actually digging through and don't know how to establish, you know, or describe an epistemology. That's where uh, that's where it was difficult. Someone, someone just asked, how could they defend that? Oh, my God, you should watch the debate. It's a train wreck with... Um, the Muslim individual basically saying that modern Westist, leftist, feminist ideology has made it so that kids go to school until they're 18, which essentially makes them freeloaders when they could be working to put food on the table and providing for the family. And because kids' sex drives are so high that they're going to engage in masturbation and fornication 
and and sexting and texting that there needs to be a solution for this and the best solution is to just marry those girls off there's no discussion about when we should marry boys off there was zero discussion about when we should marry boys off um weird weirdly and the muslim uh act, defended the notion that you should be allowed to marry an infant and you can consummate that marriage at whatever age be it four five six nine ten twelve sixteen whatever age they're in puberty now let me tell you J jimmy and i had a mild disagreement yesterday about ai stuff cool no big deal i don't know enough about it in any case and, and freely acknowledge that. I've debated some absolutely terrible, uh, some people with some absolutely terrible ideas. Um, I almost don't want to debate this individual at all. I don't want to necessarily find myself on a stage with someone who dismisses the concept of pederasty entirely uh, and just says, no, if, if they're of, of if they if they finish puberty or they're in puberty because you're not really finished, but uh, then according to Allah, it's okay. And this is a good thing because that builds families. It keeps them from fornicating. It keeps them from masturbating. And I'm like, oh, he's like, they're they're teaching kids to masturbate in kindergarten. And I'm like, I don't know that that's actually happening, but at whatever age kids it's start not. exploring their body. I'm fine with not necessarily teaching them how to masturbate, but giving them good science-based sex information so that they're not afraid of their body, so that they're not stupid about their body, and to explain what the risks are. But uh, I wonder if, I, I mean, granted, I, I have not been in the public school system now for 15 years, would have been around graduation time. Uh, so maybe things have changed in 15 years. I can tell you that, Having gone through the public school system, and and some of that was in Tennessee, some of that was in Florida, some of that was in Louisiana, some of that was in Wyoming, uh, granted all red states, but there was not a time where any, I, I think maybe a mention that masturbation exists might have come up in our sex ed courses, but there was, and that sex ed, my very first sex ed was in fourth grade, so it definitely wasn't kindergarten, uh, I, so I would have been around nine, which is about the time to be yeah. doing it because that's about the time most kids are going to be starting or many kids will be starting. Um, yeah, there was no, there was no instruction on, in fact, as the, the only thing I really clearly remember are a couple of animations that were silly. And then, uh, in one of the Florida classes, a girl raised her hand and asked, can you still get STDs if you have anal sex? And they said, not only can you get STDs from anal sex, you can get them even if neither of you have an STD already because anal sex creates STDs. And somebody sort of challenged that and was like, what, what are you talking? Like, we've never heard that. And they said, well, where do you think AIDS came from? So that was what happened when they brought in a religious group to teach us sex ed in Florida, uh, as, as I recall. That's the yeah. highlight. There definitely wasn't tips on how to masturbate. Where nobody had to teach me how to masturbate. And it's just like most people, I think I just kind of figured it out on my own. But the um, the Muslim apologist went on to defend notions of traditional family values and how the liberal Western left and feminism have, um, have degraded those traditional family values and that child marriage would essentially uh, protect those things. Because, and, and to be fair, uh, to be fair to him, he's not just advocating for child marriage in general, but child marriage as Muslims in conjunction with all of his Muslim teachings, including the notion that wives must be loyal to their husband. And so I guess if you have trouble finding a reasonable adult independent woman who's willing to be blindly loyal to you as a husband, then you'll start to make whatever excuse you can to diddle a nine-year-old or a 12-year-old. This is why the one individual uh, who used to be called 
empathetic atheist uh, who I did a podcast with years ago, who then became a Muslim and a Muslim apologist, who was mainly just a shit stirrer, would go on TikTok and poke and be like, well, why won't Matt Dillahunty debate me? Uh, that's why he has now pled guilty and is spending, I think, 12 years in prison uh, for sexually assaulting um, minor children in his care, is my understanding. If yeah. there's a fact wrong with that, um, you can look it up. I think the court records are in Ohio. Uh, but in any case, I told him, he challenged me after he'd been charged, and I told him that, because he wanted, wanted me to do a debate, and I said, I'll do a debate with you after you're acquitted. And he's like, okay, I'll contact you then. And then he pled guilty, and now he's doing 12 years. Yeah. What a shock. <laughs> Fucking, yeah. That, that specific story fills me with a lot of rage. We've talked about it already, but when it comes to this stuff, that's where a lot of my notions of, uh, uh, humanism get challenged. Uh, but we've got calls lining up. I'm, I'm ready to start. If you're ready to start, I'm, I'm ready. ready you want me to steer with, uh, yeah, go ahead. All right. We've got, uh, Helios from Serbia is an atheist. You are on the line. Welcome. Pronouns are they them? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Matt, I, I have no idea if you remember, Way let's, do, let's just say probably not better. and go ahead and start anew. And, okay, yeah. Uh, so I wanted to ask about religion's self deluding prop, uh, self deluding properties, and that you can fool yourself into thinking very, very stupid and often even unrelated things to religion. Okay. So what's the question then? You say there's a question about it. Well, what is the best explanation for those occurrences? For instance, uh, one of my occurrences was me thinking I had prophetic dreams because I saw images in my dreams that were vaguely related to reality and when I saw something similar in reality I thought I had foreseen the future for example sure um, well let's let's kind of address a claim like that um, we there are a lot of people who will have a dream and try to tie that dream to reality in some way um, we've had callers before talk about they'll have a dream about somebody's uh, death and it'll come true. And so depending, a lot of it depends on what it is that you dreamed and what came true. For example, if I dreamed last night that I was having a colonoscopy, well, that's because I already know I'm going to have one on Tuesday. If I had dreamed that I'm going to have a colonoscopy a week before the doctor told me, that wouldn't necessarily mean that I have tapped into the future. It just means that I understand that as a 54-year-old male, um, doctors are probably going to send me in for a colonoscopy screening at some point, especially since it's happened to other people. If I dream that, you know, something mundane, that I'm going to, uh, you know, eat a ham sandwich, that's not surprising. And so the best thing to do if you're, you know, I know this isn't what you're asking. For me, what I would say the best thing to do if, if that's what you think is happening is to keep a journal of your dreams and make sure you write down all of them so you can see which ones you think have a tie to reality and which ones don't. Because I think for anybody, I, I don't tend to remember my dreams. It is very, very, very rare that I wake up and go, oh, I just dreamed this. I know that I dream. I have REM sleep like anybody else, but I don't tend to remember them. And But if you keep a list, you can evaluate them. The reason we think that we're able to predict the future from dreams is because we are pattern seeking machines and we that's like the people who run around saying everything happens for a reason well no not in the way you mean it uh, most people when they say everything happens for a reason they think that means there's some guiding hand encouraging things to occur in order to reach some particular goal not only is there no evidence that that's the case. That's not how anything in the universe actually seems to work, uh, and except for agents. And I think that's the reason that we suspect that the universe works like that 
because we work, work like that. We make plans. We take actions. We predict our future actions. You know, hey, I'll call you Tuesday. Um, we do this sort of planning. And when something in the universe that is not another person, like if, if Jimmy interrupts my plans, that's another person who's making a plan to do it. We know that happens. But if something that isn't another agent, uh, if my car breaks down and that interrupts my plans, it's natural for me to intuit, oh, because I've, I make plans and because other people have interrupted my plans, now my plans have been interrupted. Maybe there's some super person who's interrupting that plan, or maybe there's some governing criteria that guides the universe, whether it be karma or whatever else. And therefore, I've tapped into that when I have a dream, that there, there's some grand power that I've tapped into. It's probably from fears of us uh, not having control, from fears of us being alone, uh, it probably stems from uh, all, all sorts of anxiety and fears about uncertainty in general. It's not at all surprising to me that people do this. Okay. But the thing that I found interesting in my case is that I only had those dreams when I had religion stuffed in my face. And those dreams and other stuff related to it stopped when I stopped believing in God. I stopped uh, suppressing my sexuality. So quick, two quick I, things, Helios. Other stuff. Yeah, I get it. Two, yeah. quick, two quick things. One, you actually don't know whether the dream stopped or not because your memory of dreams, you only remember a very small percentage of dreams that you have. The ones that have stuck out, though, you saying that they've changed what your conscious dreams, the ones that you remember anyway, changing after you went through a mental state change um, where you let go of a belief, it wouldn't be altogether surprising if that was the case anyway. Um, you know, your brain has, changes in your brain have happened. Usually when people deconvert, they don't just deconvert from the literal list of these are the things I believe. They deconvert from this is the way I take on a belief. Um, yeah, when you're when you're in church on a regular basis, or when you're a believer on a regular basis, isn't it m mundane that your dreams are more likely to surround those types of ideas? And if you're currently a religious believer that thinks there's some possibility that a god might be sending you a message, or that the universe might be letting you tap into something because you're a believer, when you stop believing, of course you're going to have those sorts of dreams less often. Just like um, I was in the Navy for eight and a half years. It's pretty rare that I have a, a dream or a nightmare about being in the Navy now. But I would have a dream or a nightmare about me being in the Navy a lot back then. I mean, to the extent that I can remember any dreams from time to time, more of them were about being in there. So, yeah, when you were a believer, there were certain things you believed. Like, to me, every night when I go to sleep, my brain is going to do something. What does your brain do while it's sleeping and where do dreams come from and what are they? Is it, as many people have suggested or suspected, this is your brain's way of making sense and filing away all the things that happened in the day? Because we know that sleep deprivation um, impacts the ability to, short-term memory loss, the ability to store information. And so there's a suspicion that going to sleep at night and allowing your brain to rest is also allowing your brain to sort and create connections. And in the process of creating those connections so that you will remember that day in the future, it is also giving you dreams of some sort and that they're going to be tied to those sorts of memories. So, yeah, I mean, the fact that you had more prophetic dreams while you were a believer of prophetic dreams is completely unsurprising. Okay. Well, I don't know what else to say except religion also made me believe in spirits, ghosts that would move stuff around the house, and uh, it made me hallucinate smells and other weird stuff. But yeah, you guys have you know? answered my questions. Yeah, I, I, okay, I'm reluctant. So, I'm reluctant to just let that pass, and I'll tell you why. Is 
when you say religion made me hallucinate spells, uh, smells. Um, so I, I, I understand. Smells hang like on. hallucinated hang, hang colors. On. Uh, hang, okay. hang on. I understand that you hallucinated smells. I don't know how you determined that the cause of that was religion. Because I only had such experiences while I was having other religious experiences. I that's, that's not demonstration of a causal connection. That's all I'm saying. True. Uh, okay. I guess then, it's then you don't get to say X to cause a... Y. You don't get to say X cause Y without demonstrating the causal connection. Uh, I, I don't think, to be clear, I don't think religion directly causes it. I think okay. uh, well, that's thinking what you said. that allows for religion also allows for this other stuff. And that's plausible, but I was just going by what you said. If you if you had said, I don't think religion actually caused it, but religion's consistent with these things, and I would have never objected. I was only objecting to you saying religion caused this. Yes, you are most certainly correct in saying so. I I don't think I expressed myself well. That's, that's fine. That's, I'm just going for clarity because I'll, I'll tell you part of this, Helios, and, and my apologies for this. It doesn't have anything to do with you. If I let this set, if I don't object, there's going to be somebody in chat or somebody send an email or somebody call in and they're going to be like, you let that guy think that religion caused his hallucinations. What's your evidence? And then I have to fucking defend it for somebody else. So it's just easier to get clarity right here now. Yeah. Well, you guys have answered all of my questions expertly. And I think this is the first time I get to hang up on Matt by purpose. Awesome. I, I appreciate it. You, normally, I, I save that for Wednesdays, but I'm looking forward to you hanging up on us now. And, and you did. So well done. Weirdly. Yeah, we've got, we've got atheist callers lining. Listen, uh, uh, so we've got some... We have at least one uh, uh, debate caller, but not an, a theist. We would love to talk to you. If you're a theist, if you have a belief in ghosts, you have a belief in spirituality, astrology, whatever. We want to explore that belief with you and your justification for that belief. If you have a person who you know jumps on the internet a lot and uh, argues with people, don't try and trick them into calling. Let them know what they're calling, but just say, hey, there's this show. You argue with me all the time. I, I you know, maybe I don't feel like whether it's that you don't feel like you articulate it well or whatever, I'd love to see you talk to these two uh, uh, who can articulate a lot of my beliefs pr and do so regularly. Uh, yeah, that stuff, that sort of stuff is good. I will tell you this too, in looking at stuff, and this is uh, this is something I've been waiting to see all week is the Sunday show, because the Sunday show is going to be the easiest to detect if there's a change in our algorithmic presence on YouTube, because this is the most consistent show. And the answer is yes. There's There's about... I would say 25% less at uh, uh, at this time in the show than there usually is. It actually could be more. On some days, sometimes it's because we have some rowdier callers. Uh, it actually it actually has the potential to be quite a bit more than that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm just just basic going off of what the baseline usually is. We are currently seeing a 25% reduction. So uh, if anybody's interested in helping with that right now, uh, watching stuff fully watching, not clicking and getting another view. Watch time is the metric that matters the most. Uh, sharing, whatever things you can do to help us recover our algorithmic hit from getting hacked this week. That would be tremendous. Anybody wants to help out. And then in the description are lots of other ways that you can support the channel. We are uh, uh, hard at work to try and make sure that we expand and and create a, a sense of security around the show as well. So uh, all of that is down below. And then final thing, Super Chats today, we just put them on the screen. We don't have time to read them out. Uh, I'll be going to Aaron's show at 5 o'clock again today, so we don't have time to read at the end. We just take calls for the rest of the show. Uh, that's pretty much everything I have for the moment. Sweet. Well, yeah. we have uh, Elena, pronouns are she, her, in Virginia. Elena, you're on the Sunday show. Welcome to the line. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, Tapping goodness. didn't change that. Um, 
I called a few weeks back, um, but I had some technical difficulties, and I heard you calling my name, and I was like, I'm here, but I couldn't get through. <laughs> so um, I'm glad this is working out. Um, all right, so may I, can I ask my question? Of course, that's why you're yeah. on. <laughs> Excuse me, I do feel a little bit like a lamb to the slaughter. Um, so I just want to preface first that I am an atheist, um, but I did want to call because I wanted to... Are you I have a skeptic? Oh, sorry. Are you also a skeptic of religion and uh, deity? A skeptic, yes. A skeptic is just a skeptic of anything and everything. But well, I mean, I have to anchor myself to some things, so uh, I, I wouldn't. You're not I can't a really diagnose what they. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't call myself maybe. Um, but I, I do have some. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm terribly interested because the, the where the conversation's going is fine. But w w could you give an example of something that you think it, that you have to anchor yourself to that you need to suspend your skepticism for? You need to not be a skeptic so that you can anchor to something. Um. Well, I, I don't think it's. I, I would I would just say some basic common sense. I mean, things that you. Well, I think just things that you two would probably agree that we can anchor, just the fact that things are solid, uh, just the fact that I need food to, like, just basic things. Like, I'm not going to, yeah. <laughs> I don't none think of those are, that. None of those require, none of those are in conflict with skepticism, but right. I want, I want you to get to your question because sure. I probably shouldn't have brought it up to begin okay. with. Thank you. Thank you. So I wanted to talk about Marion Williamson. Um, I want to particularly talk of a concern um, that's starting to come up with how people are approaching her, specifically atheists, um, or what I will assume are, are, are atheists. So she, she hasn't been relevant anywhere for like three years. So which atheists are concerned and why is it a big deal? Well, she's running for president. So. Oh, is she again? Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm a supporter of her. Um, why? I, you know, you said something. Oh, I'll get there. You said something the last time. Um, you know, not uh, you know how was it? Religious peddler, um, nut job, all that. And I'll be honest, I believe that exact same thing last time around. I really did. Um, Sorry, who called her a religion said, peddler and a nut job? I, uh, uh, Matt. I'm sorry. I, I was just I wrote it down somewhere. I I can't have the quote, but it was something uh, along those lines. Okay. Sure. I, I barely remember her, so I'm not going to remember much of what I said about her, but um, she's a spiritual advisor, yeah. spiritual guru who talks yeah. about um, divine love and is an anti-vaxxer. And yeah. yeah, I mean, she's, she, she's not, her views are not consistent with science or reality on many points. And that's the only thing I objected to. And when, when, when you ask her to say, what's your policy on this? She goes, we need to solve this with love. And then when you actually go and you read their policies, you find out they are uh, at uh, best lacking substance. I will, I will say that the first time she ran, um, I wasn't as on top of things. And, um, and I'm not surprised that these are some of the beliefs people have on her. But I know what I really like. Yes, I, do believe, I do believe she said the thing she said and published yes. the thing she published. You're right. It's, yeah. it, it would be weird for me not to believe that. Go on. I will very strongly object to any claims that she's an anti-vaxxer. She's not an anti-vaxxer. That is something that yeah. she has overtly and clearly said on interviews, on tweets on responses that she is not anti-vax she supports vaccinations um that's that's one thing i mean people say like oh she's anti-vax and saying that she's not anti-vax just doesn't prove it uh, so in january of 2012 me, in january of 2012 on her radio show living miraculously she didn't represent yeah. anti-vax ideas I believe, can you go on? Can you elaborate? Sure. <laughs> I almost want to say no. because She you empathized have... with a mother agonizing over the decision to vaccinate her children and said that she could see both sides of the issue. Okay. Look, all right. 
So you don't actually know the information we don't know, right? And you don't know the information apparently you don't know, which who does? But if she said she's anti-vax, isn't... Nobody like who's anti-vax says says the phrase, I'm anti-vax, or very few people yeah. do. They, they, they express vaccine. their concerns about, hey, I, I have concerns and suspicions that, uh, you know, vaccines uh, cause autism, things like this. That's what we mean by anti-vax, that instead of supporting and defending the actual science, they take pseudoscience and prop that up, which spread fears, which encourage other ignorant people to not vaccinate their child. The, it's, there, it's not so much that they've decided, ooh, anti-vax, Bill Maher is in many cases an anti-vaxxer um you know oh, wow. when, when okay. you start suggesting that there are problems with vaccines or big pharma in a way that discourages people from getting life-saving and 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 proper um medication that's a problem now is she the biggest anti-vaxxer ever no and like i said once again i i, I barely remember her apart from the specific things that I recall her saying and doing. Um, at the end of the day, I want to vote for someone who is properly skeptical, who is properly in support of humanistic values, who defends science, who does not spread misinformation and encourage the spread of misinformation that causes people to not get vaccinated, which causes people to, to get sicker. Um, okay, m maybe she's not a, you know, a crystal woo-woo person, although I, I heard things about that at various times. I don't know. I don't know that much about her. But at the end of the day, I, what, what is it about her that you support? But she's running on Medicare for all. This is what, this is just okay. the kind of pushback. How many other people I, are running on Medicare yes. for all? And how many of those other people are better on science? Uh, no other candidate is running on Medicare for all. Well, we don't even know who the lineup of candidates are. You're talking about a primary presidential challenge if Biden uh -huh. gets in. However, many people have in the past, and you can expect if Biden doesn't run, you're going to have people like N Nina Turner out there who certainly will be running on Medicare I mean, for all. Marianne Williamson, we definitely just in, Marianne Williamson just announced on what in the end of February, according to this, that she was running for president. Mm -hmm. So she's been running for two months. Nobody else has really even announced. Nobody of any substance or value has announced. She is irrelevant. She's never won a, a race for anything, and yet she's decided that she's running for president. That's, a good that's, that's quite a first step on her part, which she failed at miserably on the last time because she talked about things like dark psychic forces um, and other things like that and, and how we need to harness yeah. love um, this is not a rational thinking person. So what have I got wrong? But have you, her, 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 honestly, like what she's running for, trying to get corporations out of government, all of her policies that she's been running on this time around. And honestly, when you see videos, even from the last time, they are very economic focused, incredibly economic focused. She is far more knowledgeable you should work for her campaign because you're really good at avoiding the, the substantive issue yeah. and deflecting to what people say they're about. I don't, I, I, I like well, the fact that there are people with good policies, but there have been plenty of people with good policies and plenty of people with good policies that I voted for. I voted for uh, Bernie and others. But to course. say Absolutely. it's trivial for someone to say, I'm for getting business out of government. I'm for education. I'm for Medicare for all. I'm also kind of dubious on the science. And I think that we need to harness our spiritual energy. Uh, the, I'm not, I don't want to lessen that, but I do. Yeah, I know you don't want to lessen that because you, you don't understand the principles of skepticism. I want someone who doesn't just spit out t pablum that people lick up with a spoon I want someone who's actually a rational thinker. I want someone who's supportive but, of science and reality. I understand, but this, is it, look, if this was a mistake she said, and she's corrected, and she's apologized that that is either something that she once believed, but now she doesn't, that, she, that she's sorry, that she spread that, is that automatically something to discredit? Wow, I'm gonna need a link to any of that because I've been looking for your corrections on specifically the vax issue, and they simply don't exist. 
And in fact, there are more recent statements that suggest she knows to say less, but hasn't changed her position. So if you're telling me there is a quote out there where she has apologized for all of her anti-science positions, and by the way, in looking further, uh, no, yeah, the position was anti-vax, not misunderstood or just seemed like it. If you're telling me that apology exists somewhere, I'd love to see it. I mean, she spoke, she speaks about it in Trevor Noah. She was on an interview. If you look on Twitter and you put search Marion Williamson vaccination, she repeats many times how she is so thankful and praises uh, Joe Biden for being able to get the vaccine. You out. said she that she apologized for the information. So, for example, one of the things I'd like she, her to apologize for is when in an interview in 2019, she said, when I was a child, we took far fewer vaccines and there was less bungling. Also, there was much less chronic illness. And then when pressed to ask if she thinks that uh, they contribute to that chronic illness, she said a lot. And the summary was yes, that basically chronic illness jumps after 1986, the year when the government approves the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act. Uh, and, and she keeps talking about all of these things that connect, while not directly saying the phrase, which is an old political move that if you're impressed by, you are foolish. So you told me if she's already corrected it and apologized for those things, I asked for the apology and you said she went on Trevor Noah and thanked President Biden for what I think you mean is the COVID vaccine. So could you, could you mm -hmm. provide the apology instead of the uh, specific to the COVID vaccine deal? How exactly... I'm just not sure how does an apology have to look like. I don't you know. Saying, like, You're the one who said she did it. The one that you said she did, I'd like to see. I mentioned, I'm talking about specific tweets and comments that she has you said that she apologized. You said, okay, give me the specific tweet where she apologized, not where she thanked for a COVID vaccine, where she apologized for her specific spreading of anti-vax talking points and, and, uh, uh, and dog whistles of the past, some of them not actually dog whistles, some of them pretty direct. She might have, I, I, you're not, you're not going to find the apology. It doesn't exist, but you're, she might have really good policies and many that I would agree with. I thought she had good policies that I agreed with last time, but beyond an individual's policies, I'm looking for, um, their values and the way they think. Now, let me just, absolutely. Let me just rattle off a few kind of names. Let me rattle off of name, the names of a few of her books. A Politics of Love, A Handbook for a New American Revolution. Tears to Triumph, mm -hmm. The Spiritual Journey from Suffering to Enlightenment. A Course in Weight Loss, mm -hmm. Spiritual Lessons for Surrendering Your Weight Forever. The Law of Divine mm -hmm. Compensation on Work, Money, and Miracles. The Gift of Change, Everyday Grace, Having Hope, Finding Forgiveness, and Making Miracles. Illuminata. A Return to Prayer, Enchanted Love, The Mystical Power of Intimate Relationships, A Woman's Worth, Healing the Soul of America, Reclaiming Our Voices as Spiritual Citizens, Emma and Mommy Talk to God, Imagine What America Could Be in the 21st Century, Visions of a Better Future from Leading American Thinkers, and A Return to Love. Nobody writing books with those titles, with some of those titles, is someone who I'm going to view as a rational thinking person. And you know, you're right. Um, if I read those titles and I have read a few of them, I would also have <laughs> yeah, this, you know, this the titles. reaction of it. Like, oh God, gross. But all right, defend return to prayer. Go on. I'm sorry, I haven't read the book. I'm sorry. Oh, I okay, sorry. My <laughs> I, my understanding of what you were just saying is that we're just reading the title, so it's understandable why we wouldn't I, when it comes I, to you're saying on, on for example on marianne williamson's wikipedia page which i'm which has one at least five references for this on health and vaccinations marianne prefers a both and approach both prayer and medicine to physical mm -hmm. as a treatment for physical and mental health issues she's not saying anything that prayer is going to heal the illness she's talking Bull she has a whole bullshit. plan bullshit <laughs> bullshit both and prayer and medicine. This approach, specifically the efficacy of prayer, accepts medical science as part of God's power to heal. That's literally what she's advocating for with five or six fucking references to that. And that's just in the health and vaccination thing. She also believes the spirit is impervious to illness. 
which is, I agree it is, because there's no such thing. People, she believes people who are prayed for get out of the emergency room faster. How dare you, when I point out things that she's advocating for, tell me that that's not what she's advocating for. If she says, and it's a quote here with reference, people who are prayed for get out of the emergency room faster, not only is that not true, think we know from the Pendleton study, but that absolutely is her advocating for prayer as assisting in healing, right? I mean, I guess she has some belief that, that yes, that, that seems to be part of it. Yeah. So once again, you called in because you think people are getting Marianne Williamson wrong. And I'm reading what she actually says and making conclusions based on that. And every time I bring one up, you balk and then you agree. So why would I vote for Marianne Williamson? Because I do think that there is more to her than these specific things. Look, yeah, it, I'm, it, look, there's more to everybody than the I'm, things that they're oh fucking God, wrong about. That's a silly answer. Can I ask? I'm, I'm, I, you should go work for it because yeah. you're her biggest supporter, I think. Elena, I have a question. Because I, I feel yeah, like we yeah. didn't have to pass the one issue. What is Marianne Williamson's current position on mandatory vaccines to enter public spaces? So Marianne Williamson has a little problem with the with the mandatory uh, oh. vaccines because she worries. That's quite a way to put it. And what's what's her She's main defense? What's her main defense? What? Answer. I have to finish the answer. Sorry. Marianne Williamson has a problem with mandatory vaccines because she is concerned. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said little. She is very concerned that it contradicts the legal theory behind um, defending abortion. Basically, she sees Thank you. That's the what... potential. And you uh -huh. don't think she's an anti-vaxxer, even though you have seen people line up uh, behind the my body, my choice, who actually are also anti-abortion. And you haven't read why that's a ridiculous thing yet to say, because that was all that was when I was asking you, what's her defense of it? And she literally says it's the same as abortion. When we're not talking about can the government come into your house and tell you you must vaccinate to be in private spaces. We're talking about access to public spaces where you can expose uh -huh. and infect other people. So like sending yes. your child to a public school where they could infect somebody who has a disease which prevents them from being able to get vaccines. Her position uh -huh. is you can't do that for the same reasons you can't tell people they can't get an abortion. And that's a defensible, non-anti-vax position to you? So, hold on. Sorry. I, I, I think I, I lost you a little bit. So you're saying, just to be clear, that in her having concerns about... Not her having the, concerns. The, her her lining up with no uh -huh. mandatory vaccinations to access public spaces. Not just having concerns. Emma, I don't know if you're lying to us or yourself. Because that's... You're using such dishonest language. She's having concerns. I don't give a fuck if she's having concerns. I care about what she as president would implement his policy. Uh -huh. And she has projected that she would implement his policy that you do not require vaccines to enter public spaces. We've already given up on doing that on COVID, by the way, even though we likely should not have. Uh, that is her more broad policy. And it's a ridiculous wanna, position, and the abortion talking point is right along with the anti-vaxxers. Go ahead, defend it. But I'm just confused. Her, she's talking about this potential risk between supporting a federal mandate for vaccinations and how that theory potentially contradicts what we're trying to push for in protecting abortions. There was a is she case, a lawyer? There was a case. I literally just responded to this point. Let me just... No, she's not a lawyer. Are Does she a have any legal expertise the, at all? I, I don't think so, no. It, it, was, it comes from a degree. No, her, her, opposition to a, a, her opposition to a vaccine mandate, which involves people in public spaces and how one person's life impacts the other people's lives around them, her objection to that is that it might hold a precedent that could be used to deny right to abortion. Uh, yes. What is, okay. So, there was so a, somebody who's not a lawyer, who has no legal expertise, has decided to oppose a vaccine mandate because they fear something mm -hmm. uh, legal that they can't demonstrate is mm -hmm. likely or would happen. Meanwhile, 
we've already lost on abortion because the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. But it has happened. So the case, you know, you've heard about... But it has Bell, happened. Right? You know what else has <laughs> happened? She said yes. some stupid no. shit. Yeah, that, that's happened too, right? Marianne, at the end of the day, we've got a theist caller lining up. We have other callers lining up. We've hit 16 minutes, and I think that we exposed the fraudulent method by which you pick a ca candidate within the first four minutes. I think you should go back and watch the call and listen to your own defenses. And I hope you recognize what I recognize, which is you are not, at this point, you are defending the position, uh, starting with what the position is. You aren't being very honest in your, in your engagement here. I, I want to hit one last thing and give Elena sure. an opportunity. And that is, yeah, that's I have, <laughs> I agree with you that she has expressed some positions on some issues that I really like. And she has also expressed some positions on some other issues that I really don't like. And my objections to her mm -hmm. is that she is not in, in any way being skeptical, that she is not supportive of science and reality, that she is letting her suspicions about where the law might go without any, any, any demonstration that she has any understanding of this subject, uh, Im Im impact her decision on other issues about health concerns. She is not a rational actor. She does not um, rely on the facts about reality. She relies on spirituality, love, miracles, God, and things like that. And while I get it, Joe Biden believes in a God, and so do almost everybody else who's ever served, that doesn't mean that I am stuck defending someone who's advocating for woo-woo bullshit when I could pick someone who's not. That's all I'm saying. I, you know, and I would 100% agree. I, I would want to vote for someone who doesn't, but there's just nobody running. The only thing I just want to, I just want to close this off with something I wanted to respond to. Buck v. Bell, I think we are aware, is a very horrible case that basically said that states can sterilize um, mentally feeble people, which included promiscuous women or the poor. So what is considered, you know, feeble-minded, very relative. And the main precedent that they used to support that was Jacobson v. Massachusetts, which was a case that supported the enforcement of compulsory vaccines. Now, I am in favor of vaccination, and there are cases where I will be in favor of mandatory vaccine, but I do think that there is an interesting, at least intellectually intriguing connection between compulsory vaccines and abortion. My solution to that is to just not make vaccines an issue so it doesn't become a moral issue. I just well, wanted how, well, to clarify well, how do you make that vaccines solution? not an issue? Sorry? Well, first of all, Buck v. Sorry? Bell is a 100-year-old Supreme Court decision that is virtually universally agreed to be one of the worst ever. So I don't know why you're citing that in the, oh, it's happened before. Yes, and we fixed it. But how do you make vaccine not, a, not an issue? That's the thing I objected to. Well, I can imagine that there's a lot of things that we that the government makes us do that we're not like, oh, that's a moral issue. My, my, my body, you know. I think you we just don't make said any making like, vaccine not an issue. I want to know how you do that. Well, you just educate people that they trust the institutions, that they trust the system, and well, that, that they are and of support of getting their vaccine. I get why that's, you that's support Marianne Williamson, if it makes you yeah. feel any better. Because of that answer, I understand why you support her. Uh, you yeah. have a lot of work but, to do, and maybe don't pick a candidate before the primary challenger has even announced who is the current president, whether he's going or not, to go like, no no one else is running. Biden hasn't even announced if he's running or not. Yes, unfortunately, it is the case that if he does run, that's probably who we're stuck with. I say unfortunate. Not everyone's going to agree with that. But, uh, and that there won't be competition really for his spot either. But maybe wait a tick and make sure he's even running before you decide to go behind the woo person, the anti-vax woo person uh, who... Why? Well, this has just been a wild call. Elena, again, go back and, and, and watch the thing over. I will. I will. I hope you will accept the my call again. I, I won't I be as pestilent, hopefully. You're not. You're, we're not going to yeah. block you or anything. Thank you. I All appreciate right. it. See you, Elena. I will do and my homework. The only way I'll ever Bye. vote for Marianne Williamson is if she's the least worst candidate. Right. If but. somehow it's Marianne versus Trump, okay, I'll vote Marianne. Like...
I, I, there was a frustrating thing right at the end, which, which, which put a nail in, in the coffin for me. And this is not me picking on Elena. Elena is probably a wonderfully nice person uh, sure. who wants the best things. And so, like many of us, when we have an idea about something that needs to happen, like let's make vaccines not an issue. How do you do that? Well, you educate people. Look, I've spent the last two decades educating people and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't yeah. but the world has not gotten smarter i watched an interview with some fox news viewers the other day um asking them how many of you were aware that there was this lawsuit between dominion and fox uh only half of them how many of you are going to stop watching fox over it one of them what do the rest of you think oh you know this is just the way it goes it's a lawsuit there's two sides to everything it's sometimes smartest to settle this Fox News lied repeatedly and misinformed millions of people about the reality of an election, about the dangers of a, of a uh, pandemic, about vaccines, about all kinds of things over these past few years. Then when called into the courtroom to defend it, they say, well, our people are just talking heads. Nobody should be taking what they say seriously. They've used that defense on at least two different occasions. Nobody should be taking it seriously. And, you know, oh, well, it's the news, so we're just reporting. No, it's not the news. You guys are editorializing and you're teaching people. And the United States of America, if not the bulk of the rest of the world, is simply too fucking stupid to get it. Too yeah. lazy and stupid to care. We're already doomed from climate change. We may be or maybe not doomed from AI. Um, I may be doomed from the colonoscopy I'm doing on Tuesday. But when you say that ed education is a solution, of course it is. But that's not a solution. To say education is what we need is fucking obvious. Yeah. There have been people trying to solve these problems with education over and over and over again. And the problems not only aren't solved, they're getting worse in many cases. The, uh, I, the want, I want people running when I say, hey, how do you make vaccine not an issue? I want to talk about reality, not the fantasy world in which you can wait until the rest of the world embraces re rationality. And by the way, you're not going to get the rest of the world to embrace rationality or accept education while you're backing a candidate who believes prayer is co-equal to medicine, who has objections to all sorts of science things, and who writes books about mommy and God and spirit this and love this. It's fucking woo-peddling guru shit. You've bought in to a cult of personality because, and I suspect I know why, and I would agree with you, because I'd much rather have a woman in charge, a reasonable woman in charge with good policies than the parade of yet another cishet white dude that's yeah. geriatric, et cetera, as we've had forever. Now, I get it, Marianne's 70 as well, but... I would like that too. I'm yeah. just not willing to throw the baby out with the bathwater yet. And so I'm going to hold and support people who are truly, truly advocating for skepticism, principles consistent with my humanistic values, and a world that is better where we don't just say, we need more education, but we come up with an actual plan to implement that education and to combat the misinformation and miseducation that's going on on not just social media, but on news platforms. I feel in Elena's call, she actually demonstrated why her solution of we need to educate people doesn't work because she was given examples that she was apparently ignorant of on multiple occasions of uh, multiple examples of how Marianne does not comport with reality, with skepticism and basically accepted the examples and still doesn't allow it to challenge her position in principle. So education yeah. was failing her and yet she thinks educating other people will succeed. I'd love somebody like Marianne who isn't, doesn't have those positions. I'd love for that to be the person that I got to vote for. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good without the yeah. wooey bullshit. <laughs> and cool. again, the anti-science stuff. Let's go on then. Cause we've got AJ, a, yeah. a theist from South Carolina pronouns are he, him. Welcome to the line. Uh, AJ, you're on the Sunday show. Hey Matt. Hey Jimmy. How are y'all doing? 
just fine. Doing all right. Um, okay, so uh, please, like, please be patient with me. I'm not as educated as I wish I would be on this conversation, but um, I follow more along the lines of like the question of does God exist is kind of a pointless question uh, when we're talking about like mainstream mainline like theists who believe in like what people joke around as the sky daddy. Yeah. I don't believe in that idea of God, but like I believe in like some concept like beyond our understanding. AJ, real and quick. And I just call that God. AJ, real quick. What's up? You just said, I don't think that the question is meaningful, but I've answered yes to it. That the, you know, I don't think the question matters. And yet you've taken a position on it. Do you see? I think that it's more along the lines of if people believe or if people don't, then that's up to them. But to argue about semantics over it is no, no, more no, 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 of stop. like, stop. I'm right no matter what. Just stop. So first of all, nobody's just arguing semantics. But by the way, semantics shouldn't be dismissed because semantics are about what words mean or specifically how words are used. And so everything ties to semantics. But when you say that there's something beyond our understanding and you believe that it exists and calls it God, you're basically saying, I'm willing to act as if I believe in something that I don't understand, can't define, and I don't see what the problem is with that. I mean, in some aspect, we all have, okay, I'm, I'm going to backtrack on that, that a lot of people do have this idea that we don't understand everything. We do not have the full capacity to understand all That's just absolute a fact. objective That's truth. Just a fact. That's just a fact. No, no one, as far as we can tell, has a full understanding of everything. So what? What the hell does that have to do with whether or not a God exists? And then, then that idea of God is more of just accepting that sort of mystery and like using that to no, fill in the gap. No, no, that, no, 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 AJ. There is a long tradition, a robust tradition, both within philosophy and within religions, of people advocating for an actual agent being that they identify as a god, or in some cases, several of them. Not everybody has this vacuous, fuzzy, God is whatever the hell I want it to be notion. Matter of fact, your view is in the extreme minority. There are people, for example, I used to believe that a god exists. I used to be a Southern Baptist. What, what would you okay. say um. does Southern Baptist me when I say to you, there is a real God who created everything, who loves you, who sent down his son Jesus to die for your sins so that you could live forever in heaven? How do you respond to that? Um, I'm going to say that I don't agree with all of that. Which part In of fact, it do you I've... agree with? Repeat all that again. Is no. One by one? No. A couple of things. AJ, AJ, first of all, are you on speakerphone or anything? Can you move the microphone a little bit away? You're just clipping real hard when you talk. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. And then I, I, I want to clarify something just because I might have missed it. Did you say that you believe God is, that there's a universe of things we don't understand and that which we don't understand, you call it God? Is that what Look, you said? On the, on the cultural perspective, like I believe in a God and like, if I'm going on the whole like Christian move, perspective, move your I mic away. In a God that incarnated themselves, move your mic away into a human, died. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Move it away or move it closer because I thought you said away, closer. further away from you. It's it. You're okay. you're clipping like crazy. You're good. So to just just quickly define to me what God you believe in, because it, apparently it seems like you're changing from what you said last time. A uh, Christian God. You you but, believe in the Christian God. And, it, and this is a meaningless thing to you, that it doesn't matter. But I'm following more along the lines of like what is like postmodern philosophy and um, radical philosophy. I believe in the whole concept of the death of God philosophy or theology. Sorry, I got my words mixed up. 
What's the foundation and, like, for I your more in that field? What's the foundation for your what's belief in what's the foundation for your belief in a Christian God? My foundation of that is the idea that whatever aspect of the infinity that we would consider a God incarnated themselves as a human died and boom. That's now you're telling me what you believe. I asked what the foundation for that belief was. Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that question then. Why well, do you believe in talk to me like Christians I'm sorry. tend to believe in the Christian God based on the Bible? Not well, Okay, when we look at like people like Bart Ehrman or Dan McClellan, I know Bart Ehrman's not a Christian, but it's ideas of actually trying to be more critical and not take the Bible literally either, which I don't think is helpful. So why do we you all, believe, we not why theology. do other people believe? This is all so Matt's trying to ask you, you. why you believe you reference a non-believer. Like, are we what just does trying the to Bible? Here? What is like, the I'm Bible? Trying to, I'm trying to like. Ex- what does the Bible like, tell you as a Christian a you should here. do? Like, are we trying to be honest? This, this isn't a gotcha. We've just asked why, and you failed to answer why like nine times. It's like we're saying, "Hey, what time is it?" And you're saying it's sunny outside. It sounds related, but you gave us the weather instead of the time. Why? What is the foundation? What is the thing that you yeah. go because of this? It seems likely to me that the Christian God is real. Literally for 19 Look, years, I've been doing live shows where I ask people what they believe and why. That's all I've done with you is ask you what you believe and why. Well, this is the first one I saw. Sorry, I saw it on okay. Twitter. Um, but um, like the reason I believe in it is one, I am more inclined and drawn towards it. And this was a cultural upbringing People, I don't dismiss other people's beliefs in their gods. It's more of kind of a universalist perspective, I guess. So nothing your first, about that is nothing about that comports with Christianity, as I recognize it. But, but to be clear, you're saying the first reason you believe in Christianity is because you were raised with it. Is a summary of what you just said, correct? I'm not trying to get you. I'm just trying to get the first reason you believe in it. Um. For the most part, yeah. I mean, a lot of us want to be confounded by our cultural roots, I guess. Okay. Does it matter whether it's true? Does it matter to you whether it's true? Then, oh my gosh. Look, it's an idea of just drawing towards something. Does it matter if it's true was the question. Does it matter whether it's true was the question. I think that's the not the right type of question. You don't get to decide what our questions we, are. What I'm you? asking you, AJ, does it matter to you whether or not your beliefs are true? Well, I think this is kind of pointless where it's gotten. Just oh, answer I the agree question. It's fucking again. pointless. I agree it's completely fucking pointless now because all I did was ask you whether you care whether or not your beliefs are true, and that seems to befuddle I you, which means you true, don't, which means like, you don't, don't, don't give a shit whether your beliefs are true or not. You haven't spent enough time thinking about them. You haven't spent enough time thinking about truth. You don't even know what it is you believe really or why. It's all fuzzy, and we shouldn't be talking about it. Well, unfortunately for you, reality is something that we all have to discover. And some of us care whether or not our beliefs are true. And some of us care whether or not people are running around legislating their beliefs onto others and whether or not those beliefs are true or not. So take your fuzzy, I don't give a shit, I don't care about truth nonsense and go away. Matt, Matt, can I ask a few questions? I'm sorry. No, you don't get to ask me any fucking questions because you dismissed my questions. Yeah, They're you the literally most wouldn't important answer. Okay, questions. Okay. You literally suggested that our questions were bullshit, so I don't care what your questions are. You are not a thinker whose questions I value. AJ, I'm willing to try again if you answered this question honestly. What scares you about okay. answering the question, do you care if your beliefs are true? 
I'm not really scared about that. It's more of like, I just think that you have your view of what is true and I have my view of what is true. And, and, and my view of that true doesn't, is literally there, that doesn't matter you can't to grasp the idea AJ. of what is absolute truth. AJ, I'm sorry. Yes, there is a concept of I have a belief, I have a list of things I believe are true. Matt has a list of things that Matt believes are true. You have a list of things that you believe are true. But In I the think, case of, wait a second, if, wait a second, AJ. In the case of okay, Matt and I, okay. We want to know if the list of things which we believe are true are actually true, independent of whether or not we believe them. It doesn't matter to us that I, I believe in X. It matters to me whether X is actually true. And that was the question you were asked to engage in. You have what you quote unquote okay. believe is true. And in as much as anything can be demonstrated to be true, do you care whether or not your beliefs are true? I do. Thank you. That only took basically dental surgery to do. Look, mostly because I was trying to avoid saying, I think it's more relative than objective. And I felt like that was going to. The answer to whether or not a God off. exists is relative, relative and not objective. Is that what you're suggesting? I think, it's, I think it's more relative than we give it credit for. We want to scream and shout about what is absolute. And I think we're kind of, fucking stupid as humans to some of us definitely are do you believe that jesus christ Sorry, was resurrected mm. um that he was resurrected mm -hmm. no but you consider yourself a believer but in the you christian god oh, i should shut up go ahead this whole thing is is wild to me so you believe in the christian god who came down as a man correct yes yes and then as a man died Right. So, so far you're just following the biblical yeah. story. Right. And then the biblical story yeah. claims after three days, he was resurrected. And that's where you say that's when the Bible started making stuff up about this God, man. No, I'm just following more along the lines of other thinkers and trying to decide where I fit in. I'm okay. still trying to figure out. So then, on it. then I'll back up. Uh, somehow you don't believe in the resurrection, even though I don't know how to identify as a Christian if you don't at least believe in the resurrection. I'll defend non-Trinitarians. Not, not every Christian believes in the resurrection, though. Wild. What a revelation. Because uh, it seems to be pivotal to Christianity, and I don't know what definition of Christianity you're giving. But let's take that. We'll but, take it a step Jimmy, back. Hang on. You, like, AJ. Your friends, with, AJ. your friends with God is great, right? Yes, I am friends with God is great. Yeah, she, she's, had, she's had a lot of Christians on there who don't believe in the resurrection, who's actually talked about their beliefs. I will, I will take your word for it. And as I was trying to about to do, because I haven't told you you're not a Christian yet, I've just said I can't, this does not comport with anything. Taking a step back, you do believe God took human form and came to earth. You've already said yes to that, correct? Yeah. That either did happen or it didn't happen, Correct. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to want to hear correct. Is that correct? God well, either did come well, down in human form or he didn't. That's an actual part of the history of the planet. Correct? That's how I view it. No. Oh, my God. Oh my God. He either came well, down or like, he didn't. Is... Correct? For, for any given statement... That statement is either true or not true, and those are the only two options, correct? Because when I ask that question towards y'all, y'all are going to say it's bullshit to you. For that's any, fine. I don't see anything for wrong with any, that. For any event, that event either happened or did not happen, and those are the only two options, correct? I am kind of curious why you're talking back to me. I thought you were still pissed at me. I'm sorry, Matt. <laughs> Because I'm sitting here on a show listening to the height of stupidity. Here's the thing. I don't think you're Compared stupid. Last... I don't think you're stupid. Compared to the last caller? Okay. Compared to any fucking <laughs> caller. I'm asking you a very simple, straightforward <laughs> question. These things have to be established. Otherwise, we talk past each other. And you have sat there with a blubbering, nonsensical roadblock to every question. So I'm asking the obvious question. For any proposed event, it either happened or did not happen. And those are the only two options, correct or incorrect. 
or we just don't fucking know. That was not. I didn't oh ask if we fucking, fucking know. Whether we know or not, it either I, happened or didn't my happen. My question has nothing to do with whether or not you know it happens. It, for an event, a proposed event, it either happened he hung up. or it did not happen. And those are the only two options, correct? He hung up. He hung up. The answer is correct, you cowardly little shit. Afraid to answer even the most simple, straightforward question because you're afraid of where it might lead. It's also very interesting. This reminds me of the caller who called in talking about, you know, he, the one who called me a slow boy, but then uh, and said that he's super into philosophy and then didn't know uh, what hard solipsism was. Sort of reminds me of this is where this caller is started by talking about all of this philosophical basis that he's doing it. And this is where he's coming from is this philosophical world. And then when just broached with something like the Socratic method went, well, I'm not, this going to be useful. I'm going to keep giving other answers. I'm just not going to answer the questions asked and then have the audacity to go, can I ask you some questions? Do I only have to answer as honestly as you did? If you do, yeah. Jesus Christ, who you don't believe was re resurrected. <laughs> The purpose of the question was to see if you could recognize a proper, true dichotomy, because that's foundational to logic. It means that for identity, non-contradiction, and excluded middle as the foundations of reason, when we have a true dichotomy, what we have are the only two option, options. They are exhaustive in that they are the only two options, and they are exclusive in that they must be, everything must fall into one of those. Everything is either A or yeah. not A. Everything is either in the circle or not in the circle. Everything is either true or not true. Note, I didn't say everything is either true or false because true or false only applies to propositions that have a truth value. Um, an apple is not true because an apple is not a statement that could have a truth value, which means apple is not true. But when I say something either happened or it did not, that's yeah. A or not A. That's true and not true, which you could also do as false and not false. All of those are there to try to get someone to say, yes, I understand there are some things that come down to two options. But this individual, like many, many others, and this is why I point out, AJ, I don't think you're stupid. I think you've bought into some stupid stuff. Because what's happened is as soon as you hear, oh, man, everything isn't black or white. There's shades of gray. Hey, there's not always just two options. There could be a third option that we don't know about. <laughs> cool. That means I can be a Christian and believe in all the magic stuff up to the resurrection, but dismiss the magic of the resurrection, yo. That was and wild to me. Get, get to toss out all of the doctrine and everything else. And so we need to start straightforward and say, hey, for any proposed event, it either happened or it didn't happen, right? And the quick, easy, always 100% answer to that is yeah. right. Those are the two options. It had nothing to do with what you know or whether you know. It, it could be the fact that an event happened and nobody ever knows. Matter of fact, somewhere on another planet in another galaxy, there's an event that no one on Earth will ever know about. It took place just a second ago and nobody Many. on Earth will ever know. Yeah. The, the wild thing is, is the thing he wanted, the ability to monologue, I was teeing him up for. We just had to yeah. get there. It was literally, if you had just answered yes, I would have said, okay, so now if you hold the belief that it's true and I hold a belief that it's not true, how do we determine whether it's true or not? And that would have been his opportunity to go on and, and do his monologue and, and defend his method or whatever philosophy stuff. But the moment you get a little Socratic... Wow. Wow, AJ. Uh, by the way, I would actually like, if anybody in chat thinks that they can articulate reasonably, uh, preferably a Christian, not a person who's going to do it theoretically. Well, I could see it. If you have either held the position yourself at some point and can defend it ideologically, or you currently hold the position, I'd like to have a very peaceful conversation uh, about what it means to be a Christian who believes God did come to earth because of what the Bible says, but does not believe that he was resurrected. All of those parameters. Not just somebody who's going to go, well, if I was in that position, I would defend. I don't want a hypothetical. I want, I used to believe it, or I believe it now. One of those people to call in, I'd, I'd love to hear the defense of it. Have you heard of this before? Is this something I missed? Uh, of 
a Christian who doesn't believe in the resurrection? But does believe God came to earth as Jesus. Yeah, so I, I don't know that I can identify that. You've got things like the Jefferson Bible, where Thomas Jefferson kind of identified as a Christian, but cut out all the, literally took scissors and cut all yeah. the supernatural things out of uh, his New Testament. Um, I, I know that there are lots of aspects of Christianity that have been disputed in, in various doctrines, like whether or not Jesus was both fully man and fully God, whether or not Jesus even existed in a human form. So there are some people who didn't think that they thought that all this took place in his spiritual realm. As a matter of fact, a lot of the mythicists will argue that that's what Paul's talking about, that he doesn't think Jesus actually uh, lived, died, and was resurrected, but that this death and resurrection was a spiritual one that took place in a plane outside of the world. So yes, there are people who are like that, um, but yeah. I don't know how many of them, and it doesn't represent orthodoxy. And at that point, you're basically saying, gosh, I've come across some difficulties in the Bible, but I don't want to stop believing in God, so I'll just claim that it's metaphor. But, yeah, this this is the thing that's wild to me, because I everything you just said, I was like, yeah, I've, I've known the everything is metaphor, but God was still sending the metaphor people. I've never heard the, I, I wish I had asked more, like, do you believe the virgin birth? Do you believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin? I, I wish, but all I know for sure, he said, is that he believed Jesus, Jesus Christ was the human embodiment of God. God came to earth as a human, as Jesus Christ. And that that part of this, that's already so magical. That's a story of yeah. nothing but magic. So we're not this cutting out tie magic. In, this is going to tie into a video I'm doing later this week on, on a really bad argument um, that, that I, I will admit was intriguing to think about, but it turned out to be really bad about whether or not Jesus is, was, is or was transgender. Um, but uh, I'm going to do a video on that. All right, I, um, we got a couple other callers. Yeah. I kind of want to, <laughs> if we can hit, well, you're, you're driving, you steer. Whichever one. No, go ahead. I was going to say, both of these look like we should get them quickly, basically, and then see what else they're lining up. Um, well, then so, let's take Giancarlo, because he's been on hold for ages. Yeah. Calling from Brazil. Hello, Giancarlo. Welcome to the line. You're, you're on the Sunday show with Matt and Jimmy. Hey, Matt. Hey, Jimmy. Hello. Thank you for having me. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I'm here. I hear yeah. you. Yeah, what's up? Okay. Yeah, so um, I wanted to, to, to ask you guys for ages. I have been a listener for a long time. Uh, so I I am an atheist, but I also have been uh, for some time now being identifying myself as an atheist, right? Yeah. So the, the thing is, uh, Matt, I think yourself uh, mentioned this some time ago. I don't remember when exactly, but you mentioned that you were kind of leaning towards that. And no. the question that I have is, yeah, I don't remember exactly when it was, but anyway, so I'm not, um, I'm not leaning toward it. Oh, then I, then I, I think I, I, mean, I, I have repeatedly so, objected to the, so the strongest version of atheism is what's known as theological non-cognitivism. And it's this notion that the phrase God is so meaningless uh, or means so many different things to so many people, or it's it's so ambiguous that there is no cognitive, or th there there is no cogent idea there to accept or reject. And I think that while I understand where that's coming from, and I I know of some incredibly uh, smart people, one of them with many PhDs who will stop at nothing to tell you how many PhDs he has. Um, <laughs> Uh, is a huge <laughs> proponent of this no notion, and I find it to be patently absurd yeah. because while I will admit that most def most religions don't do a very good job of robustly defining God, there is the classical theistic God notion, which is tied up in the omnis, or the notion that God is the thinking agent being that created and governs the world. You don't have to know every property of it, to know, to, to recognize that here's a concept, and then you either are convinced of that concept or you're not. And the fact that there are and have been billions upon billions of people on the planet who agree to varying degrees about their, their God definition to the point where we can tell the difference between someone who believes in a Christian God versus a, ver a version of a Christian God versus a version of a Muslim God versus a version of a Hindu God the fact that we can and they can tell the difference between those proves that theological non-cognitivism and atheism are untenable positions in the broadest sense. Now, you can rightly and correctly say, 
There's so much confusion. Most people don't even know how to define the God they believe in. I don't feel like engaging on the subject with them, and that's fine. But to say that, therefore, no one can have uh, any uh, belief or disbelief in the proposition, I don't see how that works. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Th that's where I'm coming from. I I'm, not, I'm not necessarily positing that nobody has a cogent definition of God. But my point is, like, how can you have a conversation without conceding any ground on the incoherence of God itself? And also, because the thing is, as you mentioned, most people cannot define their God. And when you get to the details, even for the most well-known gods, for example, um, uh, William Brent Craig, which is one of the most well-known by the theists, not not... not by us, but by the TS themselves, which one of the most well-known apologists for this, he defines as a timeless, disembodied mind, and this kind of stuff doesn't make any sense to me. Jean Carlo, if because, I might, it, yeah, it, go ahead. if I might, and I was thinking this when you were interacting with Matt a moment ago. Sometimes on an individual level, you could say that the individual proposition looks like that. So, for example, I don't, I don't use the label "strong atheist." Uh, and I don't, I don't uh, uh, claim to say that there are no gods. However, if somebody brings me an individual god, like the Mormon god, I get much closer in interacting with that one to say that god straight up does not exist. The 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 amount of details and way you've gone to define him, we can eliminate that from existence. And so, when it comes to the Mormon god, we can specifically say. I'm more of a strong atheist when it comes to that localized thing, but broadly, I'm not going to take on that term. And I think that's what you're kind of doing here with atheism. Yes, there are times where somebody, like the previous caller, the more that they added, the more incoherence was uh, uh, added to the whole thing. And you could say at a certain point, I'm behaving to a specific example uh, like an atheist, but that wouldn't broadly make you an atheist. You wouldn't broadly take on the label when that's the case. Okay, I understand what you, where you're, you're coming from. So yeah, my main concern is like, when you put this stopping point where the person cannot define God and say, hey, I'm not interested in the conversation anymore, you may be seen as an arrogant or, um, I, I have a fear that if you don't want to move the conversation anymore because of that, you might be seen as arrogant or, or something like that. And, yes, you're seen as that, arrogant by people who concern. believe that they know the very secret to the universe because of where they were yeah. born and some feelings that confirmed it for them. So it's one of those things where it's, are you, are you asking how to avoid being perceived as ignorant or as arrogant by religious people? Yeah, I know that that's impossible, but I, I'm, I'm more concerned about personal conversations, not like broad conversations themselves. Uh, yeah, if you're just trying to have a conversation go as peacefully as possible, then usually it's the question based. This is often where I recommend things like street epistemology to people, learning how to ask questions about the way a person got to the belief as opposed to trying to challenge the belief itself. Um, those are probably the most peaceful ways. If, if, if peace is the thing you're trying to maintain, I, I would say that that's probably your best shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just pieces. It's more like, yeah. I have like um, some family members that I I'm, I don't want to get into much of the details, but they are kind of kind of into a cult thing, mm -hmm. and like this woo woo thing that Matt was mentioned. And I cannot have conversation with them anymore. It, it's like it, it got to a point that we cannot engage in anything like this. Um, so, and yeah, go ahead, Matt. I, I'm curious. Um, I, I get it. For me, theological non-cognitivism isn't the correct position, and igtheism isn't the correct position, but people can label themselves however they want. But you're talking about a moment ago, and I think still, that if they're talking about something that doesn't make sense, like something that exists outside of time, um, I can understand why that would confuse people and why you might say that is a concept that I don't think ties to reality but philosophically it's it's a discussion of whether or not something can exist outside of space and time is a discussion that we can have 
it's not nonsense. It's just not consistent with what we understand about reality now. And so unless it's, I don't understand how something can be so someone can be an atheist about God or non cognitivist about God if what's being advocated isn't gibberish. As long as it's a concept, even if it's a concept that is logically flawed, we can still discuss it. If, for example, I'm going to do a video on the Trinity because the Trinity isn't doesn't represent a cogent, um, a, a logically coherent thought. The notion that three distinct individuals can be both distinct and the same at once, and they use a, a quite often a diagram or a number of different analogies. Um, but yet, that's not the same as me saying, oh, the Christian Trinity is Fergal, Burgle, Minergal, Burgle. That's one of the reasons why I came up with Fergal, Burgle, Minergal, Burgle, because it is a truly gibberish nonsense phrase. Now it's taken on a life of its own, so it actually it means something. It became a referent uh, in and of itself. But the fact that the Trinity concept may be logically flawed, and may not be consistent with reality, that's no different than saying fairies aren't consistent with reality. Um, because that what you're saying is there's something about the facts of reality that would prohibit this. That's not the same as saying this concept is devoid of sense. It may be from a philosophical perspective uh, of like uh, logical positive events, et cetera, it may be devoid of meaning. Um, and a lot of people would argue that analytic truths um, are devoid of meaning. And since this would be an analytic truth or an analytic claim, um, it may be devoid of meaning in that sense. But that doesn't mean that we can't have a conversation about it. Uh, if for no other reason than to say, ah, here's where you went wrong. Yeah, I, I understand you, where you're coming from, Matt. I'm, I'm, the thing is, I think that in the, in the, if you go to define the type of thing, most God uh, propositions, they have some incoherent aspects to it. As you mentioned yourself, so sure. there, there's a, the, Trinitar, the Trinitarian God uh, is like, I, ha, I, I think I've, I saw a paper some time ago from uh, Dr. Rob Coons, I think it was, and he's using other types of logics to, to try to make sense of the Trinitarian God. So my, my point is, if you have to go this far to to even discuss this, this kind of stuff, I don't think it's uh, anything that has any impact on the real world. So oh, I agree. That's where I came from. But that, it's fine. This, this is what I'm saying. It's fine to say, um, I find this to be a, a boring discussion, or I don't find that there's going to be a lot of, uh, of value in this discussion, or I don't think that what you're talking about uh, it should reasonably be considered to be, you know, a, a part of reality or an aspect of reality. All of those things are fine to say, but atheism and theological non-cognitivism, to my understanding, essentially hold that that the God propositions are nonsense, and that they might as well be Fergal, Burgle, Minergal, Burgle, or whatever. And yeah, yeah, that I can't do. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand why, for example, the, this show, on this show, you kind of, you guys kind of go with, with whatever definitions the, the people provide. And, it, and sometimes you even discuss God without even any definitions proposed at, at the point. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and it makes sense because this is what the show is for. Uh, but I think that there is also, my, my main concern, as I mentioned, is, not be seen as an arrogant by stopping the conversation there, but also I don't want us to concede any ground on, on things that do, do not make any sense. So that's that's kind of another thing that I have a concern of. But I understand. Okay, why but there's a difference that. between oh, what makes sense. What there's a difference between what doesn't make sense and what doesn't make sense to you. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, like, sure. That that's. Like quantum physics doesn't make sense to me, but that doesn't mean it doesn't make sense. For sure, yeah. I, and, I and I am bored I by. I am bored by and don't want to engage in discussions and debates about quantum physics. I just don't. I have zero expertise there, and it doesn't impact <laughs> me in any way. That that I, I'm going to stay in my lane, basically, is it? Um, but 
hopefully that helped a bit, Giancarlo. And by the yeah. way, I don't have strong objections to atheism and theological non-cognitivism. I just don't, I just don't see the value, and I don't think it applies in all the situations where they seem to think it does. Yeah, but sure, sure, I, I understand that. Yeah, I, I thought I misheard your your mention sometime that you you were considering that, but I think it, it's the other way around. You were mentioning specifically that you don't consider it to be uh, a viable path. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thanks, Giancarlo. Sure. Thanks. Bye. Have a good Sunday there. All right, we got one more caller before you go. Did you have? Before did you have one more thing? It. I've been uh, I've been messing around with old GPT over here, and I had it right. Oh boy! I had it right. Here's the prompt I get it gave it. Um, write a short story about a theist calling in to debate Matt Dillahunty on whether God exists and have it end with the theist winning the debate. Uh, and they gave a story and then I said, adapt it to where quite. Matt ends by admitting he was wrong and God does exist. The argument that the caller who was named Samuel, uh, in the story made was, hang on, let me find the part. Samuel began by introducing a novel argument, one that Matt had never encountered before. He talked about the nature of existence and how complex systems, such as the universe and human consciousness, seem to require an architect. Did you know that you've never heard that argument before? It may be correct. Does it continue? Samuel acknowledged that science had made incredible strides in explaining these phenomena, but he argued that there was still room for a higher power, one that could not be explained by natural processes alone. There's room for a higher power? Wow. Yeah. Uh, and do you want to, let me scroll down to the dialogue of you uh, admitting defeat. <laughs> this is, Wait. this I'll, is, I'll say it out loud. Um, shit, where'd I go? Samuel, I must admit that if you, you want, have if you want, you can cut and paste my lines into chat and we can do it back and forth and you can do Samuel. I, they ne I, I think that Samuel was only written once or twice. It's more of a oh. description All of right. the type of thing. Uh, uh, you've played me before. You can do it again. Samuel, I must admit that you have provided a compelling case. I've never encountered such well-reasoned arguments in favor of the existence of God. Your perspective has forced me to reevaluate my own beliefs and confront the possibility that I might be wrong. Samuel, surprised by this, but grateful, says, thank you, blah, blah, blah. Matt pauses for a moment, then spoke with a newfound humility. I never thought I would say this, but you've convinced me. I can no longer deny the existence of God. Your arguments have made me realize that my previous positions were based on incomplete information and a limited understanding of the nature of existence. So according to Chat GPT, I went from, I have to consider the possibility that I'm wrong to immediately I'm wrong. I mean, I did so, tell it to do that. I mean, way. that that's cool, though, because that means that when I consider an impossibility, I can reach a conclusion immediately. It's fast. Yeah, that is that is the thing that I was I, I find the most non-convincing about the story. Like, if the story had ended with Matt took that away and kept having conversations and then six months go by or something and Matt makes the admission on air, that would have been at least a little bit more timeline no, it's, it's fair there's a number of times like i've changed my mind live on stage in a debate i mean sure. john ferrer called me out on something um where i was actually committing a fallacy smuggling something in mm -hmm. and i changed it on the spot i've referenced that one many times there's other times uh where i'm happy to change i got an email from somebody uh, i'm not going to name so that i don't out them about our discussion yesterday about um whether or not calling god a big pussy um is body shaming in the same way that someone saying someone has little dick energy is body shaming i still don't think that that's the case but i i understand that somebody else yet one more person uh does and um i i think that there's a uh colloquialism and i get it that that it ties to saying someone's a pussy ties to misogynistic notions of you know like being you're a big girl or, or whatever else i get sure. that and it's generally why I don't tend to use any sort of gendered uh, or try not to use any sort of gendered insults anyway. Um, but I will say that still calling God uh, a, a colloquialism is different than saying someone acts as if they have a tiny penis when they are someone who ostensibly uh, has been. Speaking of the person who supposedly had a tiny penis. Um, oh, have, yeah. We have a caller, uh, and I'm not talking about the caller himself, but 
Caller, uh, Cameron in Minnesota has a question related to Andrew Tate. So well, welcome to the to, to welcome to the hangout. Welcome to the Sunday show here on the line, Andrew. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and state your question. <laughs> uh, how, how's it going, guys? It's good. Um, so, like, you ever have, like, one of those who is someone in your life that's, like, your best friend, but they just agree with something completely opposite that has nothing to do with religion, even though they're an atheist themselves. Well, and they like have, they, they love everything about the whole nu nuclear family. And, you know, Andrew Tate, you know, is right because like everyone's going soft and everyone's, you know, not telling their women what to do and everything. But like, yeah, that person would no longer I, be my I, friend. I, that's the problem I'm having is like he's he's been there for me through thick and thin and like he's just recently picked this up and so I'm hoping maybe there's some way I can let him gently lay it down sure. basically because it's only no, no, a recent no. development. I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's not worth talking to somebody. You know, of course, if somebody was my friend and I thought that they were monumentally wrong on something, um, I'd have the conversation with him. But. Um, and I would continue having the conversation with them, even if I stopped associating, you know, for any time they wanted to, um, for a while anyway, even if I stopped associating them as, as a friend. But, for example, um, I have friends and family members, and some of them have views that I find particularly repugnant, um, provided they're not... Um, acting upon those views while they're around me and and my family um i don't you know i don't have to deal with those positions so i'm not going to address them but if somebody comes in and is disrespectful transphobic homophobic sexist misogynistic um and and spreading those views around me i'm going to call them out and if they do it around the people I love, I'm going to say, I don't want to associate with you because of these things. I'm happy to still talk to you and explain why I don't, uh, why I have a problem with those and why I think you're wrong and why I don't want that around me. But See, I'm not going to keep like inviting a, like somebody really... over. I'm not going to keep inviting somebody over to dinner if they're sitting around at dinner advocating for men need to keep their fucking women in line. No, that's a fair point. The, the the reason I feel like there's hope for this is because like, it 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 used to be a thing where like any time I would argue, we get into an argument. He thought that it, it needed to be like this whole, like we actually hate each other kind of thing. Until all of a sudden, like I was like, dude, no, we're cool. Like let's just like have the discussion. And he's like, oh, things work that way. And I was like, yeah, they work that way. <laughs> and I think I mean I did that yesterday. That kind of Granted, the thing we disagreed about wasn't a significant moral dilemma um yeah no fundamental problem cameron I'm just, there you are. oh yeah yeah sorry about that yeah uh, i'm just i'm just i know there's no silver bullet argument i know it doesn't work that way yep <clears throat> but if there's something that would maybe shift the mood with someone around an Andrew Tate type philosophy that's like new and do it. The thing I, is, I, is even that question, it's hard to say because some people can be, some people can be adapted by, okay, here's a, okay. For example, uh, uh, not to, not to fillet my co-host too much, but a lot of atheists perspective on Jordan Peterson was unmovable until Matt debated him and showed atheists he does the same thing with your belief, and now suddenly you're going to understand why the way he engages is bullshit. And that happened I'm for a prime, a, I'm a prime example. Yeah. I like I liked Peterson before Matt debated him, and then boom, it was done. It it, it basically exposed him. Uh, and that and so you don't know what the thing is going to be. So for some people, it's going to be watching Hassan absolutely annihilate Andrew Tate on that uh, that one stream. For other people, it's going to be watching Andrew Tate try to do a rap music video. Like, something about <laughs> that and, and how embarrassing that is, it helps. I will say that as far as my own personal experience from my extreme beliefs to now my 
uh, hopefully correct beliefs. The fact that there were people who recognized that I was bigoted and shitty about a lot of issues and and even probably did cross some lines uh, at certain times who still decided to stay my friend, those are the people who I started bouncing ideas off when I did start to de-radicalize. Those are the people that I wanted to hear a little bit of where I knew like they're not going to jump on me, they're not going to abandon me, and they're going to give me the space to explore with them that I might be wrong. And then there were other friends who, because of, I guess, their smugness, which is ironic for me to talk about because I'm sure I come off as rather smug, and maybe I am, uh, but who I avoided the conversations with where it's like those aren't the friends that I'm going to I'm going to do that with. And so creating a space in which a person potentially can explore the idea that they're wrong, uh, that isn't always hostile, even if it is sometimes, but showing that there are places where those conversations can happen is probably the most useful thing you can do. And it sounds like you already said that there there was a version of that uh, that you were working on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually, it actually, like, literally, I think it was like last night that it just, he just came to a realization that we're able to argue without hating each other. And like it, it, it just kind of like made the light bulb go under my head. Like, may, maybe there's you know a, a a chance of space. You know, like maybe this can happen. But like, I don't want to tell him what to think. Just more so how to think. You know, as the you know trope is. But yeah. But yeah, I I appreciate it, you guys. Um, I'll let you guys go here. Um, Jimmy sure. and, and Matt. Uh, go fuck at yourselves in the most important way that you uh, feel possible. That's only a compliment uh, to me and an insult to Matt at the same time. We've never established such a routine for Matt. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. Well, then I have established it this day. Okay. I see. <laughs> I see. Thanks, Cameron. All right. Love you guys. All right. Thank you. See Bye. Later. There's, there's another call queuing up, waiting to see what, uh, what it's going to be. It's taking a little while to screen, but we have a few minutes before we have to run off to read the Book of Mormon. Originally, I wasn't going to be on tonight uh, because I was planning to still be probably out of town today, actually. I was planning to be uh, not just my week off, but having left. Um, and uh, now I'm here, so I'm just going to go do it, and I'll, I'll be there. So the stream will automatically redirect at the end of the uh, show here, right at about 5 o'clock, and take people who are still waiting in the audience over. But otherwise, yeah, you should come. It's always a fun time. It's, it's mostly jokes. It's mostly us all fucking around and making fun of how silly, how obviously silly the Book of Mormon is and how clearly fraudulent it is with uh, little intellectual bits tied in throughout, usually by Bryce, uh, to really make the whole point. My goodness, why is screening this call taking so long? Uh, these are this is, this is, what is going on? I'm almost tempted to just pull it without knowing what's going on. I um I th- I didn't know there was a call being screened. Yeah, for the last three or four yeah. minutes. Just take it live. I've done that before. Just uh what's the worst that can happen? Well, I assume the screener gets confused and then pulls it back thinking that they did something wrong and then it's it's a weird uh a weird battle. I'm just gonna take it. All right. This is very abrupt. I'm sorry to whoever was being screened, but uh uh, who is thank this? You to our screener. You're on the show. You're on the line. Who is this? Uh, okay. You're live. My name's Tim. Hi, Tim. Tim. What's up? T- Tim, T I M. Yeah, T I M. What's yep. up? Yeah. Yep. So, anyway, you know, I think a lot about morality, and um, I was telling the screener, I, I suppose I'm an agnostic, and um, uh, I agree that you can't know for sure whether there is or isn't a God unless you've died and come back. So, so you know, I'm comfortable with not knowing. But, you know, when it comes to morality, it irritates me that theists think that without religion, there could be no morality. And I've only caught your show a couple of times, so you've probably discussed what I'm going to talk, ask you. Um, and I just never I never heard your explanation. But it seems to me that when we were, uh, you know, uh, Neanderthals and then evolved into, uh, um, we weren't you know, the first humans. Yeah, we were never Not, Neanderthals. We weren't Neanderthals. We were told no, we weren't natural. Okay. Homo erectus and Neanderthal. Homo erectus, right. Yeah. So when we were Homo erectus um, and it forms tribes because, you know, the tribe is more successful at hunting. So you need all your male members to hunt together to bring down the animal for the survival of your clan. You know, if, if, if one of the, and there has to be a leader of that tribe, it's just inevitable. There will be a leader, a dominant male. 
And so, you know, if one right. of the lesser males screwed another, had sex with another male's wife, then there'd be a fight. One of them might get injured or killed and not be available to hunt. So hence, no adultery. <laughs> and and then if you're, you know, you have a hunt and you're, you have the kill and you're eating it sitting around a campfire. Hey, Tim. And again, if one, Tim, I kind of, I kind of want to, I kind of want to jump in here. I get what you're saying that, that clearly there have been species that have had some sort of values you could suggest as far as the adultery thing goes, as far as monogamy and all that stuff goes, these are actually things that are up for debate. Obviously, if, if you have promised yourself to somebody and you've said, I'm not going to cheat on you, then yes, you've done something wrong if you then cheat on the person. But uh, the the whole monogamous concept itself is a moral thing. I, I'd rather get, first of all, two questions. My first question is, so I can update the Chiron, what are your pronouns? Uh, I'm, I'm 67 years old. I just go by Tim. Right, right. But when people refer to you, do they Tim refer to you as pronoun. he, him? Well, I rarely leave my house. I'm retired. Tim, Tim, come so on. Just the, the few, the few Tim is already engaged in a bunch of Jesus. sexist language from the beginning of the call. Why is the assumption that there's going to be a man in charge and all this other stuff? I, I get that that's been what it's been most of the time, but you don't get to just assume that that's necessarily what it's going to be. And, and, and your pushback well, so, on so just... Do you think that, so that with young, if somebody, young erectus, if somebody that, was uh, talking, if somebody was talking about you to someone else and say, you wouldn't believe what Tim just did, would they say, what did he do, what did she do, or what did they do? Well, see, this is foreign to me because they would say, you wouldn't believe what Tim just did. They, they would say exactly what you just said. And, and the person because after they, that, they were after, oh my God, me. Tim, Tim, stop. When person <laughs> A says, when person A says, what, you won't believe what Tim did. And person B then says, what did he do? Or what did she do? Say, what did or what did, did they do? They would say, okay, thank they would say what did he do? Right. Then why, Jesus. why, why, when we ask you what your pronouns are, wouldn't you just say he, him? Well, like I told you, I haven't. I don't really understand any of that stuff. I just go by Tim. You don't understand and the then, basics that, of fucking context, English. Well, I don't sit around thinking about what if somebody what is this? Someone having a conversation about me somewhere right now? Okay, well, Tim, the person is saying, no, 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 what did Tim no, 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 Tim. Well, he, he Tim, said this. Tim, he you're that. a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar <laughs> because if somebody, if you knew that they would say, what would he do? Because if somebody said, hey. What did she, if you're standing next to someone and you say, I'm hungry, and somebody else says, what did she just say? Are you going to correct them? Well, well, so I, should I call myself I'm? Because I just said I'm hungry. Oh, so Jesus. Okay, I'm I'm. You're just not even I'm, listening. I, I give up. I yeah. give up. I give up, Tim. You Tim, don't you understand the so basics. Fucking I give, I I give up, them. Tim. You do not understand the basics of English or you are just dishonest. So I'll let the pronouns thing go. Tim, the reason why I asked, because while you're talking about people not talking about you because you don't go out, is there are 2,100 people in chat right now listening to you talk who may want to talk about you. And they may not want to say Tim every time and sound like some weird kind of fucking robot. This isn't some magic thing. This isn't us trying to turn you trans or turn you gay or whatever weird fucking paranoia you all, Oh, he's hung up. He's not going to listen yeah. to the explanation. You, whatever your fucking weird hang up is, whatever your weird paranoia is to just be able to say yes to the people in chat who can't know just by my name or my voice, what my pronouns are, even though in my case, it is likely that they would guess correctly. Sure. They, the people in chat can know. And I promise just answering that truthfully isn't going to change your genitals. It's not going to change your gender identity. And you don't have to fuck anybody new just because you answered that question. For fuck's sake. Christ. I don't know why I even hit the unmute button just now because there's no one to unmute. It's, it's all Tim over. Tim is gone. Yeah. Tim, Tim, as someone in chat said, Tim identifies as a liar, uh, which still <laughs> isn't a pronoun, but yeah, yeah. I, I get it. It's so frustrating because if you go back and rewind and listen to what Tim said, yes. I'm just confused because, you know, there's going to have to be a leader and it's going to be a man. And if somebody sleeps with that, hang on. First of all, I, I, re, I reject every single part of that assertion. I, while I re, will accept that traditionally there has been a leader and traditionally that leader has been a man. Um, that doesn't mean there has to be a leader as a single individual. And it doesn't mean that that single individual needs to be a man. I think, you know, 
there were queens. And I don't mean like the band or uh, at a pride festival. Yeah. Um, I mean, both. This is, it was a parade of sexist language. And yeah. then when you just said, okay, you know, what are your pronouns? Well, I don't ever go out. Oh, good. Stay the fuck home, Tim. That's where you're safest. Then you won't have to worry about somebody accidentally misgendering you. But for those of us who care to be respectful about people's preference, you could have just said, I don't have a preference, in which case we could put any. Because that means if I say, you know, t you know, I, I tell you, Jimmy, um, what, what she just told you, Tim, uh, is not true. Um, I, I think she does care what pronouns are, are used. And I think she is aware what pronouns are used. And I think that if we were to ask her what she meant by I don't go out, we would find that it had nothing to do with what her pronouns were. And everything about that would have felt weird to you, Tim. It may not have, it may not have hurt you that much because you are carrying around a bunch of privilege yeah. as is as, as evident in every word that gushed forth from your orifice as a 67-year-old man with mountains of privilege. The same privileges, by the way, that Jimmy and I generally share, although we are, are uh, less privileged in some other areas than you. And so if somebody called, somebody the other day said in a, in a response to me, uh, about misgendering a trans friend of mine. They were like, you're gay, homie. Well, I'm not gay. And I find it extra funny because you're gay, you're a fag, all that stuff has been used as an insult towards people. Uh, and it's typically used towards other heterosexual men by other men who want to disparage them in the same way that you know, pussy was, or other misogynistic language was used that way. And so it's not an insult to me because I'm perfectly comfortable with who I am and what I am and what I'm not. If I were in fact gay, I would have no problem saying I'm gay. If I were bi or pan, which I may or may not be, I wouldn't have any problem with identifying that way. It's when you try to use this as an insult that you reinforce those stereotypes, just as you do when you misgender individuals. And for, for Tim to come in, I, I wish I would have known, I wanted to know what Tim's actual question was. What was it Tim was trying to get to? Um, yes. There are some who call me Tim. You know, that I means we get back to Monty Python for that. It was it's wild just and sad weird. that the people who think having to identify, and by the way, there are people who are non-binary or who don't want to have any gendered pronouns directed towards them. There are people who even when asked for their pronouns, would prefer it. And that causes a lot of problems, which if you want to find out about what are the problems with that, what are the pros and cons, why some people want to do it, why some people don't do it, then I recommend, Tim and everybody else, that you tune in on Thursday to the Transatlantic Call-In Show where you can talk to real, live, uh, in-person uh, trans people yeah. and get answers to those questions. And when they ask you what your pronouns are, just say and you can say, I don't have a preference or any is fine with me. It's five. Uh, I will, I put a poll in the chat. I'm very surprised at how many people are wrong, but we don't have time to talk about it. But I asked, is adultery, is all adultery immoral? To which 32% of people said yes and only 68 no. Uh, the answer is no, but we'll have to talk no, about it. No, the answer is time. yes. I the highly disagree. Is, the answer is yes, because in much the same way that m murder has a definition about not permissible killing. If you're saying, is all sex with someone other than who you're married to immoral? My answer is no. But adultery has a particular definition, which is why I would say yes. It wasn't the definition. Oh my God, we would argue again. Adult, the definition of adultery is having sex with someone you're not married to. It's voluntary sexual intercourse between a married person and a person who is, or, is, is not his or her spouse. There should be more pronouns there, but I do digress. Okay, there's a number of different contexts for adultery, which is probably why you're getting some yes answers. So if that's yeah. the definition of adultery that you're going to go with, then no. But adultery, um, as, as viewed with a moral, um, or a, with, with a, wow, it's after five now, uh, yeah, in the prescriptive go. sense, by and, by and large, the adultery that has been criminalized is one that would in fact be immoral, where you have 
you, you are like open marriages aren't adultery in my view. I feel this was covered because I did include the word all. Is all adultery immoral? And thereby, as yeah. long as it's an accepted definition of adultery, and so if there if, are accepted if, definitions, which it's not. If you're polyamorous and you're in a marriage and you're yeah. having sex with someone other than the person you're married to, is that adultery? Yeah, or if you are locked into a marriage you don't want yes. to be in. Oh, no, no, I, sorry, I, I thought you were giving an example. Uh, if, if you are polyamorous and you are in a marriage and but not with one of the people you're sleeping with, is that adultery is your question? I'm polyamorous, yeah. I'm married to, to Arden, yeah. and I'm having sex with Jennifer X. Is that adultery? Uh, by some definitions, yes. Well, that's what I'm talking about by some yes. definitions. And this is why the point of the asking is all adultery immoral. The whole point was to be like this person who we were talking to threw out the word I don't, adultery I don't as consider, though it was universal. I don't consider that adultery. And so I, yeah, that's why. And I think that's why you're getting some yeses and nos because we didn't define the terms well enough. Let me ask you. All right. I, I know I've got to get over to Arns. Let me ask you another hypothetical. If, if you sure. and I are married and you become an, a very abusive husband and I seek a divorce and I can't get it granted because we live in Utah and Utah really doesn't want to until it says it's subsequently good. And I actually don't ever want to return to you. And I've moved on emotionally uh, and I have sex with somebody else, but the divorce has not been granted. Is that adultery? Um, so I, I will, I will retract and concede all of it based on that, except yeah. that you're talking about whether the, the the only thing that has been granted is the legal divorce. I would say that person is divorced. It's just that they're not being permitted by the law to be divorced. They are no longer bound to that covenant that they did. Is what that's uh, my view. Yeah, this is this is, and this is the point of the question to go. There's a moral side of the question, uh, and when you take the moral side and you go against the literal side of the question, clearly there's a divergence where yeah. you can have sex outside of that marriage that you aren't divorced in, and it not yeah, be an immoral thing. I'd say that person is married only on paper, sure, um, and and therefore is not morally violating their covenant and is morally not committing adultery. But sure. adultery is a moral evaluation, not just a legal one. Anyway. Mm -hmm. More on yeah. that later. Sure. You've got stuff to go. We're past time. Uh, we're already past time, so let me just still make the announcements. Tomorrow, join us back for Skep Talk, which will be Shannon Q and Paula Gia, the power couple that everybody always requests. Uh, and then on Tuesday, I will be joined on Hostility by Apostasy. On Wednesday, Matt will be joined by, do you remember? Because I don't actually have it up front. David yet. Tamayo from Hispanic American Freethinkers. And this Thursday is being worked out, but I do know that family Dr. Ben will be on the Transatlantic Colin show. So great, uh, great week of shows to look forward to. Let's all head over to Aaron Ross channel and read the Book of Mormon and make fun of how stupid it is. Shall we? Sweet. I didn't, I, I forgot that I don't have the shortcut button ready for this. And now Matt and I are going to pretend that everything went muted while the credits were.